Hey, this is back with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and this is Tuesday, November the 20th. It's still early. It's just a little after 2 o'clock. I'm going to do this early today. I'm done, and I'm going to wrap it up and get out of here today. Um, it's really just another trading range day. We had a uh, failed break out the high side, then a failed break out the low side, and now we're headed back to test the high side again, more than likely. So, um, but this is pretty typical of the type of, um, you know, price action you'll see a lot of times during a holiday week. And so nothing surprising here. And just remember on range days, um, and it was pretty obvious by this point around 930 that it, it, this looks like a range day. You got your highs and your lows and, and on range days, usually your best bet is to fade every new high and um fade every new low and you got a chance to do that here 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 and here and um you know a couple of these were only good for a scout but a couple of them were good for quite a run so just remember that uh, on range days generally you can fade every new high and every new low and you'll you'll a lot of times you'll get a chance to get long at the highs or get short or uh, I'm sorry get long at the lows or get short at the highs and get a really good move out of it so just keep that in mind remember the rule during range days a lot of times there'll be trades in the middle here I don't mark a lot of these usually because they're you know they're not high probability trades and so but you know, once you come off the low, the odds are usually pretty good you're going to the other side. And once you come off the high, the odds are usually pretty good you're going the other direction. And you can see here where that didn't happen. We actually went a little bit higher here. And But a lot of times you can still find a trend line like right here. You can see that trend line. Then we broke it and we made a new high. That's actually two legs up to a new high. And let's just see how this other one's. You didn't have much of a trend right here. But you can kind of see that trend line. We broke it, we came back, and then we went higher from there. But, you know, always draw your trend lines like that just in case. And even if you want to draw it like that, that, um, you know, you see we broke the trend line, but you see the two legs up to a new high. And you come over here, and you kind of got that trend line. You may have called it that, but I believe that's probably more like it right there. That catches all the highs. We broke it. We didn't quite make two measured legs down, but you still kind of had two legs down to a new low, and then we reversed out of there. And so, and then, well, let's just look at this other one here. And then now you got this trend line going up. You got a trend line break. And so if we get a new high, we may sell off again. So it, it doesn't hurt to use those trend lines. Always try to use them to see if they'll, if you can glean any additional information. But once you made the new high here, you want to, um, again, you want to short that one, short that one, and you got a new low here, you fade that one, another new low here, you fade that one. And if you caught this one, runners are still good, and you can ride this all the way up. Um, but let's talk about the trades. And you can kind of see, a lot of times I like to narrow it down, because if you narrow it down, it's really obvious what your range is. Sometimes when it looks like this, it's hard to see. But you see if I narrow that down, it's fairly easy to see the highs and lows there. So But let's talk let's let's back out just a little here. Talk about each trade. The market opened um, right in here. I didn't all this mess, but the reason I like this trade is you got a double top here already, and you got, you know, you got a new high, so you really had a chance to fade it here, but the market wasn't open yet. And you kind of went into this chop, but notice you got a first entry long. Or actually, you really had a first entry long here, and there's your second entry long. Uh, so you might have tried to fade that one, but that's not as bearish looking. It's more overlap. But we tried to go higher again and failed. That's two tries after um, it's two tries after this double top, so to speak, up here. And, you know, this is a nice 
bearish bar. It closed one tick off the lows. So right there is a pretty good place to go short. Um, I really like that setup, and that one worked fairly quickly, fairly easily. Um, you know, anytime you enter in the middle, you know, this is more of the top. At this point, you might have even had your top right across here. That's Actually, that's where I started mine, right there. And so um, I was just waiting for the open. We're coming off the highs, so you got to be thinking we're going to lows. we got a new high. That's another reason. It's not the best setup because there is a lot of overlap, but the fact that we tried to go up twice there and failed, and usually any time the market attempts something twice and fails, it's, it's going to have a better chance of succeeding and going the other direction. So that's a good enough reason uh, with all the, you know, with being a new highs and all that to think about going short right there. So if you saw that and took it, nice trade, no big runners or anything like that. You actually could have ridden your runners all the way to the low, which is always a good idea to think about exiting there. When we made this double bottom and turned up, um, that's where you'd want to exit. And that's where you got to think about getting long and uh, you could have gotten long right here, but this one's a little risky because it's a very bearish bar. Uh, you never know if we're going to slip lower and make the new low. So you got to wait on a pretty good setup, and you got it right here. And it's usually best to wait on a second entry uh, before you enter when you're making these new highs. Those are generally the best ones, the second entries. And there's your second entry long. You got a new low. You went higher. You pulled back, and it trapped a lot of people down here, then turned up. So... You could go long right there, and it took a little bit to work out of here. No, no runners off of this one really, because they did come back and get the runners. But you know, it was a, it was a good scalp. And then this one's a little, this one's interesting here too. But uh, now that we're coming off the highs, you got to be thinking we're going to test the high, the coming off the lows. Now we're going to test the highs, and so you got a two-legged pullback to the EMA. It's a breakout pullback long, breaking out of all this. Um, these matching highs across here. A lot of reasons to be thinking long right there. And the best thing about it is this little trap right here. Notice those two matching lows. It ticked one tick lower, turned up. So that's a great place to go long. And there's an easy scalp up there. Any runners were safe on this one. And unless you exited right here at these highs, you could have gotten another couple of points out of it. But generally, on range days, uh, and you should have had this back up here by now, maybe even right there, because you're getting the most touches right there by the time you're getting up here. So what you want to be thinking is um, on range days is probably just exiting right near these highs, because if it, even if it breaks through, it may go a little further like this one, and you may miss out uh, on another point or two. But most of the times you will get out at the very highs or the very lows by doing that, and, you know, somewhat... You could have gotten maybe one, two, three, maybe three more ticks out of that. Um, but then by the time it turns down, it rockets down real fast. And so you give a lot of it back. So a lot of times it's better to enter, you know, to exit on that limit order and take your money and go. Um, now you got a new high here again, and usually you want to fade every new high and every new low. And you might have thought about going short right there, but when but when you had another one that formed and you got three overlapping bars and two of them are doges, you know what normally happens. It, it turns down and then it, it snaps back. And so it's better to wait on the second entry still. Um, generally, your second entries are going to be the best. Um, sometimes you'll miss a trade waiting on the second entry. But unless you get a really good setup bar, and sometimes a doji right at the highs is a good, is a good entry bar, um, or at the lows is a you know is a good entry bar, but you need a well proven um, support of resistance, and this one's not so sure. You know, you, it looks like you're pretty good right there, and then it looks like maybe right there, and then it looks like maybe right there. So we're kind of you know there's not a real, and you definitely should be considering the high of the day, and we haven't got there yet, right there are right there and you can see that that's where we actually went to on that trade so unless you got a real clear like right down here this is pretty clear down here at this point but the ones on the high are you know they're they're fluctuating around different places so uh, you got to be careful and make sure you get a good setup and this was the first bar and what I actually did here was uh, 
those matching highs on that bar stopped right there at the same height. I just dropped a limit order in there. Uh, just like so. And uh, it tur it's ticked one tick higher. And I was out real quickly on that one. But even if you got in here, it moved on down pretty quickly. You didn't get anything more than a scalp because now you got two legs back. And there's no real short set up here at all. Never does it set up a good short. So um, even if you wanted to go short here, you can't because there's no setup. Um, you you might have thought, hey, if this, you know, I'll go short below this bar, but it, it never goes, it never triggers. So, and it comes back up. And by this time, you just got all these overlapping bars. And so really what you got here is a failed break lower. And I tried to get long on a limit order there. It didn't work. But when that bar tried to go lower and stopped right there, then you know you got a little break down here. And so that's a good place to go long. And it took it a minute to go work. And I got nervous at first when this ended as a doji. And sometimes you may want to get out on that uh, with a tick or two if you can. But I held on figuring we were going to test this because that was the first break of this little trend line up through here. I had, you had a little trend line right there. That's the first break. So you're probably going to retest this high. Not always, but there's a good chance. And, of course, we did go test. And we actually went higher. Um, you might have got fooled right here as well. Um, I know I did. I dropped another limit order in right there above those matching highs. And uh, it ticked up. It turned down. I didn't quite get out. So when this thing broke lower and turned back up, I just went ahead and exited that one. And um, I can't remember if I broke even or lost a tick there. But I got fooled on that one. And that's a pretty good setup right there. It just... You know, but it's not a new high, and sometimes you're going to get a new high, and really, um, that's what we're looking at right there now is a high. So now you got a failed break above the new high, and again, you didn't really get a good setup uh, until maybe this bar right here, but it never triggered. It went higher, and then finally you got a big negative bar, so you could have gone short there. Uh, remember to keep your stop above the signal bar, which would be that bar right there. And uh, we did turn higher, but again, um, it wouldn't have taken out your stop, and it turned on down, and it went lower. And depending on how you entered this trade, your runners might or might not have been safe. Again, I dropped a limit order above those two matching highs, and it ticked up, closed, turned down, and never really looked back. So that was a good setup there, and it made up for this one easily. And by doing it that way, um, my runners were easily safe. So I was able to ride this all the way down. But even if not, you could have entered right here and got another chance. And you see this big bearish bar right here. You can't ignore that after a sell-off or coming off the highs. And, uh, you know, do you know it's going to do this right here? No. But that's why I like to keep runners because, uh, you know, you can ride it all the way down. And, you know, I just exited right in here. I didn't fool around with it. And then I'm looking for a long. And this was a new low. So I actually entered here. And this is not a good setup, though. You better off to wait on a second entry long. You got that right there. Still an easy scalp. And um, then I'm looking, when this bar ended right here, now I'm looking for a short right there. And uh, this was a nice, easy short after that big move down. There's always a chance you're going to get another leg down. Um, and off it went. And uh, not any big runners, but it was good for several points there. 74 to about a 78. It's about a four-point move. So um, this is something I don't talk about this much, but this is something I look at. When you get these gaps, they're not 100%, just like right here. Here's another one. Uh, but when you see those, that means the market's really weak. But one thing I can tell you is it's usually not long before prices come back, like right here, and fill that little gap and turn down. You see right there, it didn't take long at all to come back and fill that one. Let's see if there's any more. I don't know if there are. But when I see one of those, I know generally if I get a reversal bar somewhere after that, that we're going to come back. And it's usually pretty quick, like this one right here. And so a lot of times I'll use that for a signal to either enter or exit, knowing that prices are coming in this direction. So uh, think about that for a little bit. If you can find a way to make that work for you, it, you know, it's 
Again, it's not 100%, so don't trade on that alone. alone but uh, if you see something that, that you like that goes along with that, that just gives it a little credence because they generally come fill those. And you see there's another one right there. I didn't even see that one. If I did. I don't remember it. And notice how we snap back and filled it, and then they try to take it lower again. And again, there's no good setup here to go short. Um, this bar never triggered. This bar never triggered. And by that time, you got a bunch of overlapping bars. And if you go short right there, guess what happens? It snaps back. You get trapped on the wrong side, and up it goes. So, But the good thing about this entry right here is you got a nice bullish reversal bar. You go long right there. Your runners are easily safe, and you can ride this. You know, you're still long if you want to be. Um, when we made this double top right here, I really thought we'd probably go lower, but uh, we didn't. And, and, you know, that's not a great setup bar. This one's a lot better. The best ones are the ones that close on their low. Bars that, you know, just reverse like that and close. But you, a lot of times you won't see them close on the very high. Here's one that turns down. And see, that one didn't close on this very low. And look what happened. It snapped back, too. Um, when you find the ones, there's one right there. That is very bearish. I love those bars right there. Because you got a lot of stem, then you got all this sell off and it closes on its very low and look at that move down. Uh, those are the best ones. So that's the best kind to see, a nice reversal bar. And this is one that's really kind of a reversal bar. Open on its very high, closed on its very low, uh, just real negative, and you got that big sell off right there. So there was actually some very high volatility. Uh, well, I wouldn't say very high, but anytime the Fed speaks, you know, anything can happen. This new, this could have been news-driven um, based on, you know, Fed Chairman Bernanke came out and spoke around 11.15, and it could have been, this could have been based on some something of something of what he said. Um, my guess is that's what they'll come out and say at the end of the day regardless, but, uh, but at any rate, uh, you had this big sell-off right here, and this was certainly worth entering on right here. And you can see that moved quickly lower. We made that new low again. Nice chance to get long. Uh, it's only a two-legged, it's just a two-legged pullback to the EMA. You got a little trap right there. It turns back down. Nice bearish bar. Uh, another chance to ride it down for another three or four points. Then reversal and nice time. And that's, this is the hard part of trading for a lot of people is these are these range days because you're constantly you know most time people are looking to get long and try to stay long or looking to get short and trying to stay short and you can't do that today and make money you got to switch with the price action when the prices start making lower highs and lower lows you got to be thinking short and that's generally going to be off the highs and when it's making higher highs and higher lows coming off the low points you got to be thinking long and you know, sometimes you'll get it right, and sometimes, just like right here, where I got it wrong, sometimes you'll get it right, sometimes you'll get it wrong. And that's about as good a setup as you normally are going to get. Look at that. You got those matching highs. It's up here near the high. It's, you know, it's kind of a, um, all the overlap, the congestion, it breaks lower, fails, snaps back, breaks higher, fails, and then usually it's off to the races. But this time I got trapped and it fooled me and it went a little bit higher and you know that's just part of it there's nothing guaranteed in trading and I I've gotten a few emails actually there was some uh, quite different questions on um, here on YouTube you know asking about setups that fail and you know and and not necessarily price action maybe not following the rules. None of these, you know, rules are not written in stone. Not anything can and will happen in trading. The, our rules are based on biases. And when I say based on biases, they're based on what's going to happen the majority of the time. But that doesn't mean it will happen every single time. You will still get fooled. You will still have things that happen just like right, just like right here. And, um, so just keep that in mind that nothing is ever written in stone. Nothing's 100%. If trading was 100%, we could write some rules and 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 put it into some kind of uh, software language and the computers could just trade for us. Nobody would have to trade. 
And a lot of people are trying that, and, and you know, and it works sometimes, and it works for a little while, but it, nothing seems to work consistently other than following the price action. And you know, if you can learn to follow these these rules and find these trend lines and look for the breaks, just like right here, this was a good. This right here, if you didn't know. Not to be, uh, if you didn't know any better, not to be long. This, if you follow that trend line, generally you're gonna get a pullback, and that doesn't always happen on on these. And you might even say, okay, well, here's one right here, and we didn't get a snap back, but it tried to go back and it trapped everybody and went the other way. But uh, you know, that's not as that's more rangy down through there in all of this than this is. So um, this is more of a trend right here. You got more pullbacks and tested that trend line so just keep that in mind I mean nothing is ever written in stone anything can and will happen and trades good setups fail I mean there's never going to be something that's a hundred percent or else you know if it was easy everybody would be doing this and making money uh, what I can tell you is if you follow the price action and follow the rules on the setups you will come out you will come out on the right side more often than not, and that's all we need is to uh, be right more times than we're wrong. And if you really learn to watch this stuff, you'll get to where you get it right, you know, six, seven, eight, maybe even nine times out of ten. And if you cut those one to three times that you're wrong short and don't let it take your money back, um, you will do okay. And generally... Where you enter, the best bet, if you'd entered here, say this is your signal bar, keep your stop. A lot of times I like to keep it two, two ticks above because just like right here, if you if you had got suckered in right here and you kept it one tick, well, then you got stopped out only to watch it go exactly where you thought it was going to go. So that's why I like to use two ticks because I can show you over and over right here. Look at all those highs and it ticked one tick higher and it just traps everybody and then they run it the other direction. And you will see that over and over and over and over again. But if it goes more than one tick, doesn't mean that it's still going higher, but there's a bigger chance like right here. So um, I like to keep my stop one tick below. The, if this was my signal bar, my stop would be two ticks, look for one tick, and then go another one. And if, But it can't be more than two points. Same thing right here. If I entered right here, and my stop is going to be two ticks above this as long as it doesn't go over two points. And you can see that by doing that, you know, it tried to come back up here, but it never gets above the two. Here's one where if you'd entered right here, but actually that never triggered. I was going to say if you'd had your um, two ticks above this one, you'd still, it looks like two ticks right there, but there's no setup here or not. This is your actual signal bar. You go right here, and there's not any, and it never comes back to test it without it before the trade is good. So um, just watch those signal bars. And here, here's one right here. Here's another good example. You go short right here. Your stop is two ticks above this bar. And look what happens. It breaks one tick above it and then shoots lower again. Still didn't probably give you your scalp, but you shouldn't have been going short there anyway. And... Uh, but notice how that happens. And here's another one. Notice those matching highs. It went, it ticked one tick higher, and now it's turning down again. So we're really starting to struggle up here at these highs again. So just keep that in mind. Uh, this thing's into 23 minutes. I'm going to wrap this up. Um, not sure if I'm coming in tomorrow or not, but if I do, even if it's only for an hour or so, I'll still try to do a chart lesson based on the time I'm here and if I don't see you again this week, hope everybody has a good Thanksgiving holiday week, and I will see you next Monday uh, because I will be taking, definitely taking off the rest of the week and through the weekend. So I uh, hope you had a good trading day today. There really were a lot of entries, mostly only scalps, but there were a couple of run, nice runs here. So I uh, hope you had a good day. If not, just keep working at it. That's how you get better at this. You keep practicing. And I actually got a note from somebody the other day, and they were saying how they don't get to trade every day, but they still come in and do their chart lesson, and then they compare it to what I saw, and that's how you get better. There's no, That's exactly how you do it. You do your chart lesson every day. Um, and the, and the, the best 
way to do it is to make sure you, you know if you can trade every day and watch this stuff in real time don't worry if you're you know make sure you're on the simulator and don't worry if you're right or wrong just take the trades if you think they're a setup and if you're wrong you you know you follow your rules and take your stop and just look for your next entry and at the end of the day go back and start at the very beginning here where the market opens and just starts following the price action and look and see the trades that worked the trades that fail and study them and figure out what you did right what you did wrong and the things you do right on try to keep doing those things the things you did wrong try to understand what went wrong did you read the price action wrong was it just a failed trade um, did you enter in congestion did you enter below a wrong bar and try to correct that tomorrow and you know over time and some people it may take them a few weeks but most, and some people may take them a few months, but most people it's going to take you a few years. It took me a few years, uh, you know, and I still get it wrong. So um, don't let it discourage you. This is a very difficult um, business. It's a very difficult uh, field to try to break into, but it can be done if you spend the time and effort. The key is don't blow your account trading live when you're not ready. And if you haven't, been able to make money every day on the sim trader for multiple months and you're not ready to be trading live because all you're going to do and i can promise you no matter how good you think you are how smart you think you are all you're going to do is donate your money to some somebody else that's already paid their dues so don't do it get on the simulator practice every day study your charts at the end of the day and uh, what you'll notice is that over time you will slowly start to see it you'll slowly be able to glance at this chart and know exactly where you should have entered and why and then as time continues to go on you'll slowly start to see a setup or two in real time and you'll feel real excited when you see it when you notice it and how well it works and then uh, still doesn't mean you're there it just means you're getting there and uh, you know you'll start to see more and more and eventually um, like I said not only will you be able to look at a chart at the end of the day, you'll know exactly where you should have entered, why you should have entered there. You'll probably have a good understanding of why prices reverse there. And and uh, but once you start to see it in real time, it's it's amazing. And uh, and and you'll get there. Uh, again, it may take you months or years, but don't give up. If you really want to do it, just keep working at it, keep studying, and you'll get better. This is a long chart lesson for a holiday. So I'm going to wrap it up, but that's all good stuff, and I promise you that's the key to it, and that's the way to get there. And uh, I'm going to wrap it up. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.